welcome to the A Lot of Thoughts Pad Podcast. Whoa, Padcast. That's not what it's called. It is just Courtney here, um, just going solo today. Anna has had the busiest summer, and she is heading out to Kansas this week to deliver our, well, there's a wedding, and then she's also taking um, her sister back to college. So we're really sad because we've had Ellie around for months and months and now she's going back. And um, Paul John, my son, has like fallen in love with her. Um, Because before that, he really didn't know her very well. Um, So it's been nice, but we're really sad that she's leaving. Um, But either way, she has a busy week and um, we actually weren't even supposed to have an episode today because I was supposed to be gone on a work trip and we just didn't know that we'd have time. And then, I mean, my work trip got canceled for the second week in a row. So I am here. I actually did a little Instagram live earlier this week and I was like, well, I'm going to record this, but then I was about to go live, and I had to do it at a certain time because Paul John was down for his nap, and (laughs) I could not find the cord for my mic, so I recorded it, but I was like, okay, if I get a chance, I'll re-record, and I'll just hold on to this information for later, but then whenever we found out that Anna just didn't have time to record the episode today, um, I was just like, I'm just going to hop back on and... um, kind of repeat what I said in the Instagram video. So if you already watched that, um, feel free to skip this. But if you want to listen, I might say something different. Who knows? Um, But basically what this is all about and where it all came about, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about making assumptions. And it's just going to be short, kind of quick, and then I'm going to also share a little bit of what I've been reading, what I've been listening to, um, so yeah, I noticed this week, I, I know personally with friendships, I'm really, really good at making assumptions, meaning that someone says something and my first thing I do is jump to how they were meaning to insult me. Um, so like someone says they don't want to do something with me, like this is just, this didn't happen to me this week. Someone says they don't want to do something. And suddenly I'm like, oh, well, they hate me, I guess. And I just harbored bitterness towards people often because I assumed that they were trying to say that they didn't like me or something crazy like that. And before I was saved, most of the time this would happen. And then like two weeks after we didn't talk or whatever, we'd realize that we were both like neither of us was actually upset, but we were upset because we thought the other person was upset. But then I would usually get upset. So the other person would get upset thinking I was upset when I was just upset. You know, it just ended up being a cycle of literally just miscommunication. Um, And I lost some friendships over that. Um, I had to fight for some friendships because of that. Um, And praise the Lord, I still struggle with that. But this week, I had that happen to me. Someone did wrong to me, um, a friend, and even my husband said, like, oh, that was wrong of them. So, like, it wasn't like I was crazy, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes I feel like I'm making it up. Like, this person actually wronged me. But I took a step back, And I said, okay, what did they mean by saying this? And I realized that they didn't mean to wrong me. Um, And instead of anger, I did respond. I was a little bit disappointed, um, which I I think is just going to be a natural reaction. But typically, my first thing would be to jump and say, well, they did this on purpose and be angry. And I mean, honestly, just the Lord, I don't even know how I was able to just not freak out at this, but I love it whenever I'm sitting back and something happens and I'm like, sanctification, like I can see the Holy Spirit working in me and um, just the grace of God to let me see changes from like a year ago to now. 
I mean, just, uh, it's just amazing what God can do. So um, before I jump really into this, I want to start off by reading Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. And if you've listened to us before, a lot of times I do like to have a verse that's just like, as I'm discussing something, this is kind of like where I'm, 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 this verse is like my key verse for what I'm talking about, but really just going back to this. And you see um, here where um, we're striving for peace and for the holiness without which no, without which no one will see the Lord. Um, and then it goes into see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. And I think we have to like see that there there's a reason why those two sentences are next to each other. And I think that... I didn't say this in my Instagram live. I said I was going to probably expand a little bit. Um, But I think whenever we strive for peace with one another, even among affliction, that it is a witness. And, and, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, we always hear like about being witnesses to um, the unsaved. And absolutely, I'm, I'm not saying not to do that. But how often are we witnesses to each other? I think it's in Ephesians where Paul says, like, I... Maybe it's not Ephesians. Maybe it's Philippians. Um, It's one of those. And Paul says, I'm thankful for you and for just... He's he's basically just thankful that he's heard that the that the church is still pursuing God and continuing in the faith. And so, how often do we have opportunities to treat each other with grace and mercy and to forgive one another quickly, and to strive for peace, as it says right here, so that we're able to just say, you know, I'm I'm going to be a witness to my brother or sister in Christ. Um, and then it says, uh, no quote unquote root of bitterness. Um, springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. And I think when I when I was reading that, I really just root of bitterness. I mean, guys, especially I don't know. I think it's like a a female problem where like you're in like a group of friends, and then one friend gets mad, and then the other friend gets mad at the other friend, and you know, like you can't even like that wasn't supposed to make sense because you can't keep up with it because you're just all mad at each other. Or, or you let, it says root of bitterness, you let it kind of sit there and like grow up, you know, in your heart. And then all of a sudden it's this big fight. Um, And honestly, if, if it's a, if it's a real friend and especially if you're sisters in Christ, um, I, I don't, I don't think a sister in Christ who's truly, truly striving after God would purposely um, try to do you harm. Um, Anna and I have even had problems like in our friendship because I think every friendship has that. Or even like Paul and I have had problems in our marriage. And how many times with Anna it's less because she doesn't live with me um lucky her but especially with Paul like how many times have we been mad at each other and then took a step back and realized like I'm not mad at you I'm I'm or I mean you didn't do anything to make me mad is what I'm saying um just maybe it was a miscommunication or I often think sometimes when we're disappointed like We've had times where Paul, he's on call for his job a lot, and he'll say, we're going to do something, and then he'll get a call, and we have to stop and not do it. And I remember the last time that happened, um, he was taking Paul John, like, out of the house. I think he was going to a park or to go fishing or something, and I was going to stay home and clean, which, guys, that's my favorite thing to do. I do not mind cleaning if I'm all by myself and I can just turn on a podcast or some music and just clean and get it done. So I was really excited and literally they got to the car and he got a call. And I remember kind of gauging my reaction at that point and it wasn't a reaction of anger. It was pure disappointment because I... I, something I thought might happen didn't happen. Um, And I could have responded in anger, um, which is what I've done in the past 
um, and respond. And, and that anger, even if it was directed towards his job, would come off as directed towards him. And that is not striving for peace, guys. Um, and so this is just so important. It's such an important thing because we've got social media. Um, right now you've got people who are posting um, such and such a political party is stupid. and Or they're posting... I don't know, like for women, I think sometimes we'll see like two of our friends are hanging out and we're not hanging out with them and suddenly it's like a big thing. I was actually watching Daniel Tiger and that happened and I told Paul, I was like, this is the story of my life. Like Daniel Tiger comes up and all of and his two friends are playing together and he's like, they've been playing all day. And um, I was like, yeah, that, I get that, Daniel. Um especially because I'm a social person. Um, you can have this with your spouse. You can even have it with your children. Um, my child is not old enough for us to have, like, verbal things happen. But um, just a silly example. One time he pulled a Pyrex glass bowl off of our table. And it didn't even break. But my first reaction was to just get mad at him. When, no, he shouldn't have been pulling things off the table. But he was young. And I had left it on the edge of the table, and he didn't mean for it to fall. I didn't break. He was fine. It just scared me, and my reaction was anger, and that's not okay. Um, basically, something it's always something someone did or didn't do, said or didn't say. And if we actually like came and talked to that person how much easier would it be to solve? I actually, this reminds me, I work at a bookstore and one of my coworkers and I were talking about teen books and I, like, I will still read a good teen book. Um, like, I just finished rereading through Hunger Games so that I can listen to the prequel. Um, and I was talking about how, like, now reading teen books, I'm really, really picky because they all seem so whiny. And she looked at me and said, yeah, it's literally just communication. Like, that's their only problem, is that they won't talk to each other. And I was like, that is it. How many times are we, um, if you're a teenager, I'm so sorry, you're dealing with this full head on, because this is like your main issue. Like, you don't have debt, you don't have <laughs> bills, you don't have um, work, possibly, or like full-time work. Like, so your focus is on your friendships. But for someone like me, like, why do I still act like a teenager who can't talk to the person that I, like, think that has hurt me? And better yet, why can't I just take a step back, look at what they said, and realize they didn't even mean to hurt me at all. So there's nothing to address. Um, sorry, as you can tell, I, it's, I'm getting, like, fired up because I'm annoyed at myself. Um, so... This even happened recently where my dad, my dad has a lot more grace than I do in every situation. He's a pastor and um, he is just, uh, he's had some people do some really um, rough things to him and say some rough things to him. And, and my dad, he is willing to stand up for truth and stand up for his family. Um, he's not going to let people beat him around. But at the same time, my dad has, treats people with such grace, even when they do mean to hurt him. Um, and I just, I think about that. Um, and him recently saying something to me, I was upset at someone and he knew and he called me and said, do you ever think that that person literally didn't mean to, to, to say anything that would upset you? Like they were just doing what they were doing. And it was really annoying because it was true. And um, that person was upset at me because they thought I was doing something. And I was reacting because I thought they were doing something. And it literally, just that cycle, really annoys me. Um, mainly because I do it all the time. And I'm really, I'm tr I am, ever since studying this, every time I study a subject, all of a sudden I see it pop up in my life. And it's kind of like a little test. Like, are you actually going to, like just be okay like are you gonna fall into sin so um just basic steps like these seem so trite but once you've heard it I hope that it sticks out in your mind and especially um if you do some like uh, 
pre-situational prayer. I don't, there's got to be a word for that. Like before you actually get into the time when you're going to be tempted to sin by reacting wrong, um, stop or uh, go ahead and be praying for this. Pray for it daily that God would give you the eyes um, to see whenever you're wrong. That God would give you um, the ability to grant others grace and forgiveness. Um, When it talks about forgiveness and it says forgiving as God has forgiven you, the thing is, is that I don't think in our humanity that we can do that on our own. Um, I think that's why we see the world right now being very um, focused on not forgiving without something back in return. (laughs) Um, And honestly, it ends up not being forgiving, but that's another story. But I just, I think that we need to be in constant prayer. If this is a problem that you have, you need to be praying for this daily and not just when you get in the situation. But the next time someone insults you, take a second, stop and pray about it. Consider the truth behind it. Um, Consider if they were actually trying to hurt you. (laughs) Um, And then quickly forgive. When I was in college, Paul and I were dating, and this is one of my most cringy moments ever. We have been dating for a little while, so he knew me well enough, but I had a friend who I was just really upset with, and it's one of those things where if you have a friend that you're upset with or just someone that you're upset with, a lot of times it's what dominates your conversation. Um, so if you want to tell, like, if you've, like, forgiven someone, if you've been like, I forgive you, and then... of what you say for like the next month is all about that person, you probably need to reevaluate whether you've forgiven them. Um, The people that I've actually forgiven, because you know, you know when you do that. People I've actually actually forgiven, um, I typically don't remember until someone brings up their name if it's someone that I've had to kind of I think it's okay like if 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 to forgive someone and then just say, hey, maybe we don't need to be best friends anymore. It's cool. Um but the idea behind that is forgiveness. But um, I told Paul that I wasn't going to forgive someone. I was like, I'm not going to forgive them. Or I, I think I said, I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm not. And I remember him looking at me like I was crazy. And I get it now. Because why would you live in unforgiveness? It's such a burden. Um, and it's such a burden to constantly think that you're right. It's such a burden to constantly think that what people are saying to you is attacking you. And whenever you take a step back and realize that um, specifically brothers and sisters in Christ are not out to get you, it's so, it's so freeing. Um, I realized that this week when something happened to me that could have caused some real problems for a long time if I had made a big deal of it or if I had harbored um, feelings of, of annoyance. And... Um, Turns out, surprisingly, within a day of me looking at Paul and saying, nothing needs to be said, it's fine, they didn't mean it, within a day that person like kind of commented and and said they were, like, they didn't say they were sorry, but like acknowledged the fact that they disregarded my feelings. And it was just a a light bulb moment for me um, to see that I prayed for that person and I prayed that I would be able to have grace and forgiveness. Um, So I'm just going to read two verses to close out. Proverbs 18.2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Let that one sit. Go ahead and make like a cross stitch frame. Put that on your wall. Um, (laughs) Over your computer, (laughs) wherever you sit to get on social media. Um, Proverbs 18, 13, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. If you are quick to make assumptions, quick to jump into arguments, it's not a good thing. Um, And I'm saying this to myself, you are not as smart as you think you are and you're not as cool. And you know what? Sometimes you accidentally offend people too, Courtney. Um, And I just want to close out by reading, um, uh, well, actually, really quick. I think to sum it up, I'll put the I'll put a link to this in um, the show notes. But Tim Challies has an article, um, and he goes through First Corinthians thirteen, which is the chapter on love. He kind of breaks down really well, so I'm just going to put that there if you want to look. Um, 
But he says, um, here's what I conclude. It is sinful to assume bad motives. It is sinful to not assume good motives. I think that needs to stay at the front of our minds. Um, Hebrews 12, go back to that, verse 14 to 15. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. So keep that in mind this week, um, this month, the rest of your entire life, guys, because that is what I am doing. Um, So just because next week's episode I might have a guest um a fun guest that I'm very excited I'm not sure I don't want to like say it get my hopes up and then be disappointed (laughs) if it doesn't happen but it should be happening so hopefully next week um and then hopefully Anna is um gonna stop being a world traveler and she's gonna um come back and We're going to start doing, we were, I I just want everybody to know, we were like batch recording episodes. Like we were doing two at a time and then it just, we were just too busy. So hopefully we'll get back to that. But um, what I'm reading, listening to, watching, um, first of all, listening to, because I made a list on the, on the Instagram, the Instagram, um, people don't say it that way, but I just mean like our Instagram page. So I guess I should have said our Instagram. Anyway, um, I caught up on Emma from Always Only. I love hers and um, I love her music. I specifically commented on that. It's such a blessing to just hear good music. when, Like sometimes there are certain theme songs. I'm not going to say certain theme songs on certain podcasts that make me annoyed. And the worst part is you can't skip over them because they're not 30 seconds long. So, but I also really love Undying Light. And also, like, I think Alex, I don't know that he ever listens to this, but Alex from Undying Light. I like that and Matter of Truth that he's on. Like, those two are like every time they come on I'm like da, 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 da. so um anyway you guys didn't need to know that and I sing with Emma whenever she's sing- I sing harmony to her so Emma if you need backup I got you girl um and then women of the table is back which makes me happy um they are like they're they are along the lines if you've never listened to them you need to but they're along the lines they remind me of um sheologians um, and I also did put sheologians on here because they have been touching some topics that have been really annoying because feeling a little convicted. I also have, so I have Undying Light on here. He still has the attribute series that I, um, was on there with Emma on, um, I always say that what it is, truth, God's truth. Is that what the episode's? I don't know. You can probably figure it out. The one on truth. Um, But that whole series has been so good. And I really enjoyed the one. I haven't listened to the most recent one, which was on mercy. But the one on love was really good and addressed it really well. Um, Also, Bible Dingers. That's a new one. Um, And I am only a few episodes in. Those guys are so funny. I love funny podcasts. Like, I really like serious ones. Well, no. I would say that, like, there has to be a little bit of of humor to it, Um, unless it's, like, a person by themselves. Like, I think Ali Betstucky doesn't do any humor, Um, and someone else I'm going to mention in just a minute doesn't really do humor. Also, Coltish doesn't do, doesn't really do much humor, and I'm grateful for that, but I really like them. Um, But Bible Dingers, they go through, like, a book of the Bible, and so I just listen to Genesis or I'm in the middle of Genesis sorry it's been a couple days um but their one on like why the Bible is true is so good it is something that I've needed to hear and I feel like I'm gonna go back and like take notes on what they say just because it was so well done um so then cultish I did mention them been listening to their Manson series, and it's really good, um, really interesting. I love Coltish because I really, um, 
one of my big things is the more I learn about the cults, the more I know that I'm not in one, <laughs> which some people would probably say that I am and I'm not. Um, so yeah, then there is um, Thankful Homemaker, which is just, it's Marcy Farrell. She has a website, I think it's thankfulhomemaker.com, and guys, it is my new favorite. It's short, it's sweet. She has both practical advice and the, the, like theology in there too. Um, she has a few really good ones, I'm trying to think. Um, I actually sent some to Anna, because we talk about this all the time, like, some of our things are, um, like, cleaning and dieting, and she doesn't talk about dieting, but, um, so I really liked her episode on delighting in being a worker at home. Um, that was a real wake-up call because I've been struggling in my home, and then what does self-discipline look like? That was a really good one, too, um, yeah, just so good, and I kind of want to have her on. I haven't talked to Anna about that, but I kind of do, so I, I've i been talking to her this week, so who knows, but um, I also have downloaded, which I haven't started it. I'm really good at that. I'm really good at being like, I'm going to do this. Her daily, I think it's called her like daily docket, where she, I, it's like a PDF that you can download where it walks you through like um, your full day, what your goals are, what you need to get done. Um, I think there's like a prayer request section. I haven't, I got it printed. It's like on my printer printed, but, um, she's just really, 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 really highly recommended. I started from the beginning too, which you can't do with all podcasts, but I did that with that. And I did that with Bible Dingers and I just highly recommend it. Although I have talked to someone from Bible Dingers, I don't know who, but they said that they get funnier as they go on, and I'm here for that. I am here for that 100% because I like to be entertained while also learning. Um, so on the other hand, I am reading, I'm reading um, Written Out of History by Senator Mike Lee. Um, wait, let me make sure that's his name. Yup. Mike Lee. Um, and I had asked in a group... Um, I'm in on Facebook, like, what are some good history books that aren't, like, changed? Because I'm not going to read, like, you know, you know, like, I, I want, like, a good history book. And it is so entertaining and interesting. I did try another one before this that was entirely boring and I quit. So, and it, this isn't my type of thing, but um, I do think it's important for us to go ahead and study our history because if you see the way the world is going, and I'm not trying to be a doomsday person, but these are things that we need to know. And so this one talks, the first chapter is about Aaron Burr, which by the way, I did watch Hamilton. And by the way, I love Hamilton. Um, and that's all I'm going to say on that. And also find it really funny that cancel culture has not canceled Hamilton. But that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> so if you haven't watched that, I it was really good. Um, and also I've been listening to the soundtrack for like, I think like, did it come out in like 2015? So like five years. I've been listening to it like since like the first few months it had been out. I started listening to it. Um, so really good. And also, I am reading um, Whatever Happened to the Gospel of Grace by James Montgomery Boyce. And guys, I'm devouring it in terms of this type of book. Like, reading a chapter a day, just underlining, telling Paul, like, you have to read this. I need you to read this to see what he says. And if there was ever a book that was needed right now, it is that one, I think. Um when it comes to the church. And then I'm going to go ahead and read Doctrines of Grace. Anna has her copy of Doctrines of Grace, so if she listens to this, how's it going, Anna? <laughs> I I mean, you know, I don't know when she'll listen to this, so maybe it'll be like weeks, and she'll be like, I'm done. Um, so yeah, um, I also watched this new cooking show on Netflix, and it was the weirdest thing, and I... It's called Crazy Delicious, and it was good to a point, meaning I had a really icky feeling watching it, but I started watching it, and then I couldn't stop, and like I don't, I think I'm gonna, 
make it one of those that I don't watch again. And I think I think it's interesting. I feel like I need to say this because I'm not I'm not recommending it. It's clean and everything. But the problem is, is that the judges and I even showed this to Paul and he was like, that is so weird. So it's the contestants are in like this garden, kind of like think Garden of Eden where they can pick whatever they want, and the prize is a golden apple. It's one of those, like, British ones where they get amateurs, and then there's no actual, like, money prize. Um, So they win this, like, golden apple, which, so you're thinking Garden of Eden, golden apple. And then the judges sit up top in all white, and they're called the food gods. That is why I don't suggest it. It's weird, and I don't know why, and I even looked it up, and people were, like, upset they were like, this is, this is, why would you call someone a god? Like, no. And it's like a whole running joke the whole time. But it's just really weird. But they cooked really cool food. Um, but it's probably not going to be one that I watch again. But past that, I like I said I watched Hamilton. I don't think I do anything else. Um, I, I don't think I've, I have been, um devouring books so I've been I bought another book um to read I'm reading a teen book called Uglies by Scott Westerfeld that I used to love and it's a really weird book and I don't suggest it either because it's really poorly written but now I have to finish it guys I have a problem um but yeah that's about it if you guys have any thoughts um complaints comments suggestions questions any of that you can send that over to us we are on instagram at a lot of thoughts pad podcast i keep saying pad cost it's 8 45 at night so i'm gonna blame it on that um a lot of thoughts podcast or you can email us at a lot of thoughts podcast at gmail.com we would love to hear from you guys and also i always forget to say it last week i don't even think i said any of this at all but If you want to, you can go ahead and subscribe, rate, review. We would love to hear what you guys think. Um, If you hate anything, don't judge us based on this podcast episode, please. Because Anna's normally here and she translates for me. Sometimes I, like, say things and it's not quite clear. And she says it clear. So hopefully everything was clear because she's not here. Ooh, that rhymed. Um, But anyway, until... Next week, it will be either me, maybe, or me and a special guest, or possibly, if nothing works out, I don't know if we'll have anything, but um, definitely subscribe so you can get the latest episodes as they come onto your podcast um, hosting site. That sounded fancy. Um, But anyway, y'all have a good day, and we will talk to you next time. Bye.